welcome back to another van tour from GB Camper Conversions. This is based on the Peugeot Partner TP. It's the same version as the Citroen Berlingo. So internally it's the same size dimensions. It's pretty much the same on the outside as well. I think it's only the badge that really changes. Uh, so just starting on the outside, the only external feature that we really have is the 240 mains inlet. So we've gone for the black, just because it goes with other parts of the vehicle, silver and black, keeping with the black and silver theme. Um, this side door, as we open, is you, you can't gain entry. Um, so this is where the bulk of the seating is, and hence why we've fitted the electric inlet on this side because you're more often than not going to have this door open because you can't gain access in and out. So that's why we put that there. The other thing is as well, is if it's a petrol version, we don't put the mains inlet this side by the petrol filler cap. Um, and then on the passenger side, this is the entry point behind the passenger front seat. So as you can see at the minute, we, we can't get access because the toilet's there, but that is purely for traveling purposes. So it can be stored whilst you're traveling. And then at the end of the night, that's where it's used to be used. And again, I'll show you how that's used later on. But we can see here now, just coming down, normally we end the floor level with where the original floor ended but we've extended this floor again it was the customer asked us if we could extend the floor we've gone so far and as you can see the seats sit on there nicely the toilet sits on there nicely so it is usable there uh, but we haven't gone too far forward and this was purely from a resale point that if this gets sold later on in life and somebody with slightly longer legs wants a longer driving, but the seats come back further because they've got longer legs. Well, then that's why we've only come so far with the floor. It just makes a little bit of sense, really. Rather than extending it all the way and then obviously not being able to sell it on to anybody that's a little bit taller wants to adjust the seating. But while we're here, I did mention about the toilet and how it's going to be used. Uh, as a nighttime feature. So it's out the way, it's not in the way of your bedding. You can still use your storage inside and your worktop. Now, like our L shaped seating conversions that we do on these smaller vans, you need to bring the two seats forward to allow that bed to come forward. So it would already be in this position. But the intention is, is that you can now come into the side loading door. So okay, in the middle of the night, if you're desperate for the toilet, you'd get off your bed, you'd get out the back door, because again, what I'll show you that you can get out the back door on the vans that we do. You're quite easily gonna get in here, the feet go down in the rear footwell, and you use the toilet. It's a good height for you to sit at, so you're not falling onto it and struggling to get back off again. Obviously you do the flush, as long as you've got chemicals, it won't smell. 
So that was the idea of keeping it there, one for traveling purposes and two for it to actually be used in the night. Now, if I housed it in something, all of a sudden with a permanent box there, this is no longer an access point. So the main part of the conversion, like I stated earlier, this is an, what we call our L-shaped conversion because of the L-shaped seating. Uh, there are many options that you can have with our conversions and one of them is being the, um, the thicker foams. Some people like the thinner foams, some people like the thicker foams. This one's actually got the thicker foam, it's got the Dacron and the stock in there. And we don't charge any more for that because we use exactly the same amount of material. We use the same amount of plyboard. We would use the same amount of backing. The foam is slightly more expensive, but we don't mind. We, we take that cost. That's fine. It just gives the customer an option at no extra charge. So the seating in this one is really nice and comfortable. Like I say, 75 mil thick foam with Dacron and stock in there. I mean, that is, is and again, turning it into the bed with the same thickness foam, really comfortable. So coming to the actual storage unit on this one uh, and some of the other features that uh, this customer has requested. Um, the unit itself, we've got a nice worktop. This is a little cover that we put on our sink. So again, you can use it as worktop if you're prepping food, doing whatever you want to do, pop your telly on there, your tablet, whatever you want to use it for. Uh, and this is the lift up hatch. Now, as you can see, we've got no doors on the front of this unit. And there is again a reason for this. It's a customer request. Uh, so this is the lift up hatch. We put a, a plinth catch on just so that it actually holds it shut. It's not rattling around while you're driving. Uh, and the request was to put the two burner hob in there. So that's stored away in there neatly. It's got his gas pipe, it's got his regulator. It's not gonna be used in there. It's just gonna be housed in there. Obviously you can't get to the knobs. So it's really unusual in there. But it's just a place to store it. Some people like to uh, cook on site. So that's where it gets stored away. Okay. The other compartments on this storage unit like I said, this end is where we put the sink. So we'll just take our top off again. You know, it's just something that we do if you don't get a glass lidded version, which they are normally quite a little bit bigger, so it's harder to house it. So we just make this, you can use it as a lap tray to, you know, eat your dinner off, put something on it to use as a chopping board. Do, there's various uses for that. Anyway, it's just a cover. And then we've got our stainless steel sink, nice steep bowl, uh, just over 300 by just shorter than 300 on the width. Uh, and it's just got a cold water supply with a cold tap. It's on a micro switch. And there we go. Decent amount of pressure in the pumps that we use. So if you're not waiting all day for it to fill up or to get any water out. Um, and the door on the end of the unit is where we house the fresh and the waste container for the water. Okay, some people don't mind, you know, you've got to lift up the back door to, to fill up the water. It's surprising how far 10 litres of water actually goes when you've only got a single tap to use it for. Uh, and again, it's a 10 litre waste, you might end up drinking some of it anyway or so you're not going to actually get 10 litres of waste anyway, but it's not too much of an issue to open up the back door. Either go and fill up your, your fresh or empty your waste. It's not like you're going to be doing it every five minutes, so it's okay. It's a good compromise. Decent sized storage. You get two decent sized containers in there. You could even throw a few odds and sods in there if you wanted to. Maybe your toilet chemicals, that kind of thing. You can get small bottles. They can live in there. All good. I'll show you the other storage compartment at the other end of the unit. Okay, so this is the storage unit at the opposite end. Um, and like I say, on the top, 
is where his cooker lives. Now, they have got a bigger bottle rather than uh, the little canisters that you put in the portable ones. This is actually a bottle. Now, this is where it's stored for traveling purposes only, I must state. So we've put a strap on there, we put the bottle holder. So the intention is to, uh, to undo it from its strap, bring it out and park it here while it's in use with his uh, portable twin burner on this worktop, should he use it in that way. Failing that, the idea is um, to take it outside and use it as well. So you've got good ventilation with the doors open, the back door. I believe they're having a driveway awning, so you, again, you, you can put items in there anyway. But just coming back to the, the storage compartment, so it is sealed. And I know it's only for traveling purposes only, but we always put a gas drop hole in there anyway, which goes outside. I know it's not being used, but just as a precaution, you know, some of these gas bottles, especially when you're exchanging them, you do not know how good the bottle is that you're getting back. They're probably checked. I would like to think so anyway, but you know, as a safety precaution, gas drop hole, seal it, you're good to go. So that's that compartment there. And now with the toilet not being there, because again, I think the, the idea is that that's gonna go in the driveway awning as well, but it's just an option that I showed you earlier where it can be used if you're just having an overnight stay and you don't wanna put the awning up, it can be used there. But other than that, you get your free space. And that's the idea where they're, they're quite happy to come in and use this as an entrance point and get out that way. So. In an emergency, there is nothing really that's gonna stop you from getting out of that way. The other way out is the back door, and I'll show you that now. So like we, all, we always do in the micro camper conversions that we do, because uh, there is no access or no button for you to get out of the vehicle, and if you are gonna find that it's uncomfortable trying to get out, and out of that side loading door there, we always put the push button on the back door. So because the newer models, are, they have an electric switch, we just fit the switch. It's just a case of pressing it. So that unlocks, and then because it's on a damper, it'll just open up within a matter of seconds. So that's your way out as well. I mean, it's actually, I do like the tailgate version anyway, because it gives you that little bit of extra coverage, you know, especially with some of the weather that we, uh, that we get, you know, if it's a little bit of drizzle, you don't mind opening up the back door. The tailgate stops anything from getting really, really wet, but it just allows a nice breeze in anyway on a, on a nice summer's day like today. Let's show you some other features that this particular build has had as, as extras. Um, and they've opted for the window boxes that we're now doing. I know there's a, there's a few other manufacturers that do them, but we've only just started doing them. Um, we do the big door rather than single doors, just a shelved off compartment. We've done a smaller compartment at the bottom. Everything's carpeted, so there's no, there's no way of any of breaking anything. Obviously the glass is behind there. We make our own blinds. Uh, for the rear windows as well. Just a great little bit of extra storage. You know, you, and again, utilizing the space, this window aperture here is used for nothing really. So it's, it's a good way of utilizing something that's not gonna be used for anything, but now it's turned into a storage compartment and the same on the opposite side. Same as the one over on the other side, we've got a shelved off taller compartment at the top and then a smaller one at the bottom. Carpeted, carpeted blind at the back, which is held in by the window box. So that is, that's extra storage straight away. Even if this was just pure storage and there was no sink, there was no, uh, there was no hub in there, no gas bottle, extra storage all round. Now talking of extra storage, this seat box underneath this seat box is 
completely empty for storage as well. So that's, uh, it's 900 long by 450 wide. We don't put a partition in it, just in case you want to put long things in there, but ample storage inside those seat boxes. And again, nice and easy to get to, just lifting up the cushion, putting your items in, dropping it back down. Okay, you've got to move the backrest, but that's fine. And the same on the other seat. So on the other seat, you only get the one storage compartment because okay so that's the paperwork for the customer so you get one free storage box we do partition it off so you can't get to what's in the other one and in the other one is where the electrical systems live we've got the leisure battery we've got the consumer unit we've got the charger transformer the banker fuses so it just keeps it away you can throw stuff inside this compartment and not worry about it going over onto your electrical items maybe pulling a cable or you know doing any kind of damage in that sense and then last but not least the other storage that you gain with this particular model of Peugeot Partner TP is that it was um, a wheelchair access vehicle so you may have noticed when we opened up the back door um, where the drop down section was where the ramp is so here is where the ramp used to be we cut the ramp off we take the winches out we take all the electrical components that are in there out all the switches uh, we do away with that we take the, the I think there's a third seat in the back so we take that out as well and then we're left with the wheelchair ramp and what's left of the vehicle so this one is operated by the lever that you push across and then that drops down now this was the last piece of storage that I was on about so you get one halfway on that side and then on this other side that we're coming over to is the full length of the vehicle so it depends what you want to do you know some people like to go fishing you can get your rods in there you can get your awning poles if you're taking that kind of awning anything long ideally now runs inside there and it doesn't take up any more storage in the vehicle so we make a false floor we partition it and then we put our new floor on top with the vinyl covering and then we start the conversion so that in one of these is an added bonus for storage As, like I say especially in a small vehicle you get your usual arrangements of electrical items so you've got your two so 240 socket your twin USBs your power socket now there is a, a partition that runs inside this unit so you can't get to those uh, this is the switch and then this is our battery level gauge indicator it just tells us the health of our battery that's our switch for our lighting so we put a couple of LEDs in the roof one in the front centrally and one in the rear centrally it just lights up the van nicely and then the last piece of equipment that we have fitted on this one again and this is again it's an extra uh, but it's a nice little touch is that we fitted the curtains curtains at the back and curtains at the front and what they actually are uh, they are listed as a Volkswagen transporter divider curtain from the cab to the conversion in a Volkswagen transporter. Now you can cut this al aluminium rail down. The curtains are a set length. Uh, you know they come with they come with everything. So you get the rail, you get all the little hooks that go into the rail that hold onto the curtain. You get the poppers to keep it there you get tie backs and then you get the curtain as well and they're on a little popper so they stay there and that they are the perfect length they don't quite touch the floor but obviously with the back door down anyway you, you can't see down there anyway so we have one at the rear which is just nicely kept out of the way you get the little poppers in the centre Keeps it shut 
So there's three of those. You drop the back door down. It's looking nice and cosy in here now. Now, like I say, we put two in and the other one is at the front. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make up the bed. And it's very simple in these. It's just a case of, if we just move that cushion for a second, pull the front seats forward. Might have to get a little bit of tilt on the driver's side. We'll do the same on the passenger side. And we put handles on our seat boxes so that they're easy to grab hold of. We just pull at the front, extend it forwards as far as it'll go. Drop your infill in. We're good. Same on this side. Pull the seat forward. Drop your infill in. We are good to go. <laughs> now, like I say, we have put another curtain in at the front here. And again, it's exactly the same curtain. We've just screwed it up there through the lining material. Now, it's actually held really, really well. It's, you could hang off that, I'm very, very sure that you could pull on that quite easily. It's not going to pull down because there's quite a few screws in it. And, it, and I haven't gone through the roof, by the way. <laughs> just if you're thinking, ah, oh, that's why it's so solid. So yeah, that just drapes literally behind your cushions. Same on this cushion, oh, sorry, curtain. That seat wants to probably just go forward a touch. They meet in the middle. And now we've got full privacy with our single bed made up. And like I say, if you're desperate and you want to use the toilet there, you can. You don't have to, but it's just an option. And that's GB Camper Conversions micro camper conversion that we do on the Citroen Berlingo, on the Peugeot Partner. Uh, it can be done on the Combo Life as well, the new versions. And you can have all these little added extras. Really set it off nicely. You get a choice of materials for the seating. You get a choice of thickness of foams. You get a choice of materials for the cabinets, for the worktop, for the flooring, for the carpeting that we do on the seat sides. You can have more lights, you don't have to have any lights. Yeah, so there's plenty of things to choose from to make it your own personal touch inside your micro camper van. So we have a website gbcamperconversions.com there is a contact form on there there's a phone number you can get in touch you can ask us questions make an inquiry be happy to speak to you and if you want to you can subscribe to the channel you can like the video and you can turn on notifications so the next time we do one you, you are automatically not notified but thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.